U.S. yields fell yesterday despite cautious talk from the Fed speakers and equities extended gains. Oil, however, tanked below its 200-day moving average, and the technical indicators now warn that we are actually getting closer to the oversold market territory in the crude oil market. So welcome. This is Swiss Coast Daily Market Talk. So first things first, Portuguese markets were hit yesterday by the resignation of the country's PM following an investigation into possible crimes of corruption involving lithium and hydrogen projects. So that was big on the news. The Portuguese PSI 20 fell more than 2.5% at yesterday's trading session on the back of these political jitters and the political uncertainty. But that scandal in Portugal didn't resonate much in the rest of the European markets and the European indices, which were actually little changed at yesterday's trading session. The stock 600 index remained offer at the 445 level, which is an old support that turned the resistance recently. And the outlook for the European stocks remains negative due to well, the slowing European economies and the slowing European activity. And the euro dollar slipped below the 107 mark at yesterday's trading session, uh, regardless of what happened in Portugal, as the US dollar extended its gains for a second consecutive day. Now, yesterday was quite an interesting day in terms of Federal Reserve talk and the market's reaction to that Fed talk, because a few Fed speakers, including Mr. Neil Kashkari and Madame Michelle Bowman, actually sent a cautious message to the market and to investors on Fed's intentions, like, it's too soon to declare victory on uh, inflation. We will continue to watch the economic data to see what happens next, and the three months of promising inflation isn't enough to call victory on inflation as inflation is ticking up again and more tightening could be on the pipeline if needed but but in vain the market's reaction to the latest comments from the federal reserve speakers was a thick and a determined what Ever because the U.S. 10-year yield fell below its 50-day moving average yesterday and is consolidating there this morning. The U.S. 2-year yield studies below the 5% psychological mark and the gap between the two is widening again as the dovish Fed expectations swamp the marketplace following the soft U.S. jobs data released last Friday, remember, and the Federal Reserve's decision to Pose for another month its interest rate hike. So, the Fed President Jerome Powell is due to speak this week as well, and well, he will certainly say the same exact thing than his dear colleagues, and that's that the Fed's fight against inflation is not over just yet, and that the Federal Reserve will continue to watch the economic data in the US to decide what's the next steps, which could actually be another pose in the interest rates or a potential hike. But, but investors have made their mind clearly, and they actually trade confidently at this moment of the game on the expectation that the Fed is done hiking the interest rates. Now, I also think that if we don't see these inflation numbers in the US take off, the Federal Reserve is actually gently done hiking the interest rates. But, but the excess optimism that we see in the market today and the falling yields as a result of it will get the Fed to firm up its monetary policy stance to make sure that the financial conditions in the US don't ease too fast and too soon. So a 50 basis point fall in the US 10-year yield and a strong rebound in the equity markets as a result of these softer yields are not good for taming inflation. Therefore, and therefore, I expect a bond rally in the US to gently start slowing, approaching the 4.5% level in the US 10 year yield. And I also expect the US two year yield to return above the 5% mark in the coming weeks. In equities, the S&P 500 is above its 50-day moving average for the third consecutive session, and the rate-sensitive Nasdaq 100 also broke above its summer's downtrending channel top and is in the positive territory. And at the current levels, the S&P 500's earnings yield is around 4%, and Nasdaq's earnings yield is around 3.70%. So that means that the Federal Reserve should actually proceed with a couple of rate cuts in the US 
and the sovereign yield should fall significantly more from the actual levels for these returns on the US indices to look appealing to investors in comparison. And that's why the equity really doesn't look that it's on a solid ground to me. And that's also why the very Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway increases cash positions by more than 20% last quarter and increases short-term T-bill investments by 36% while adding only around 3% to its equity portfolio. So all this to tell you that you are not the only one trying to figure out whether it's time for a sustainable rally in equities or not. The thing is, investors have been seeing the market through their rosy, rosy glasses since around last week and even less than ideal news or comments that come in uh, since last week don't get much traction. Look, Apple gained almost 1.5% at yesterday's trading session. The share price pulled out the downtrending channel top and hit the 100-day moving average level and that even though the company actually announced a sluggish outlook for this quarter, remember that was just last week, and also announced this week that it will halt the development of next year's software updates for iPhone for iPad and for its Mac to root out glitches in the code. So the latest news is barely cheery, you would agree with me, but you can't really tell that when you are looking at the Apple's share price. Smaller companies though, they're kind of feeling the pinch of these tougher financial environment and tougher financial conditions. And in this context, I'm sure that you all heard that we work filed for bankruptcy this week. Now, obviously, we can't really say that they were doing well and that they were in good shape since a while, but they could have done, well, obviously better in an era of free money than they do right now. And in the sense, the non-cyclical, the value names, although they are boring, are preferable for those looking for some portfolio readjustments to a slower economic growth environment. US equities could continue to outperform the European and Chinese peers, and I would also decrease my exposure to energy stocks moving forward, even after the environment-friendly Mr. King Charles announcement that well, the UK will still distribute new drilling licenses in the North Sea area, and that despite the climate change warnings from around the world. So this brings me to oil that has rapidly and unexpectedly fallen from grace since well, the beginning of this month really and is still still very much struggling on the floor because the barrel of US crude fell almost 5% at yesterday's trading session after the $80 per barrel psychological support gave in to the growing weight of the increasingly aggressive oil bears. The price actually fell right below the 200-day moving average near the $78 per barrel level in a swift move at yesterday's trading session and is consolidating below this level this morning at the time I'm talking here. Now, trend and momentum indicators in oil remain comfortably negative but but the RSI index now warns that crude oil is about to step into the oversold market territory so that basically means for the short-term traders that it will soon be time for a perhaps minor correction. So I see buyers come in at the $75 to $77 range and a correction to go around $82 to $82 per barrel range with limited upside potential above that level though because the risk of a sudden jump due to supportive geopolitical news is obviously live. But if the war in Gaza, if the Iranian warnings that this war could actually escalate and spill over to the region, and if OPEC and Russia's reminder that they will be keeping their production levels tight well, couldn't prevent this month's sell-off in the oil markets, I believe that the slowing global demand rhetoric will continue to outweigh the supply concerns in the oil markets and that will keep the market in the bearish waters. So in terms of pricing, the US crude remains in the bearish medium term trend below the $85 per barrel level. So this is all for today. I'm Ipeka Skardeshkaya and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive feedbacks. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful 
and it has been insightful to you so please do not hesitate to leave your comments your reactions and your questions below as usual and follow us on instagram on x and on linkedin for regular market updates and subscribe of course to our youtube channel for daily market comments and please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them so i will meet you again tomorrow and until then good day trading